Hello, good morning, salam alaikum, bonjour, I'm Bernard Combe from the Education for Sustainable Development section at UNESCO and I'll be presenting on the ESD for 2030 framework, roadmap and world conference. Why are we talking about all this now? Because, as you know, this is a critical year for, for us in terms of various processes. Uh, such as climate change, biodiversity, uh, evaluating the SDGs. This is, uh, as the Secretary General has told us, what we know, what we believe in, what we do needs to change. What we have learned so far does not prepare us for the challenges. This cannot go on. We must urgently learn to live differently. How can we do that? A proposal is to adopt the ESD for 2030 framework for achieving the SDGs. The ESD has been recognized by several UNGA resolution as a key enabler for all SDGs. ESD for 2030, also known as Education for Sustainable Development towards Achieving the Sustainable Development Goals, is a global framework for this new decade of ESD. It's a roadmap for governments, education stakeholders, civil societies and learners of all ages to reorient the goals of learning from the purpose for the purpose of societal transformation. ESD for 2030's goal is to build a more just and sustainable world through education. We all know change is needed. We must le learn to live together sustainably. For a better world, must, we must learn for our planet. This change of thinking, behavior and action is not achievable without education. This is about preparing learners of all ages, in all settings, for the battle of our life, as UN Secretary General calls it. He said, we are in a battle for our lives, but it's a battle we can win. And we can win it if we use ESD. So what needs to be done? The ESD for 2030 roadmap helps to spell it out. ESD gives learners the tools, knowledge, values, and attitudes to act for sustainability and ants is a key enabler for all 17 SDGs. ESD for 2030 thus aims to fully integrate ESD and the SDGs into policies, learning environments, capacity buildings of educators, empowerment and mobilization of young people, and local level actions. But ESD does not only promote learning on the important topics that the goals address. It also promotes the critical and contextualized understanding of these SDGs, which invites the learners to see the interlinkages and tension between the goals in their local, national, and regional context. It calls for so societal transformation. We know that societal transformation is needed to address the interconnected challenges we face, climate change, loss of biodiversity, extreme inequalities, threat of future pandemics. This transformation starts with education, which is why transformation is at the heart of ESD for 2030. The framework promotes lifelong learning, which is transformational and holistic. Individual actions are intertwined with structural changes that aims to transform the deep cause of the crisis we face today. It empowers people to transform themselves, to take action, to transform the world. It is about re-looking at learning outcomes. It's about re-looking at learning content. It's about changing pedagogy and learning environments. As has just been mentioned, some of the key features of this new framework and roadmap is the emphasis on education's role in addressing all 17 SDGs, on transformation, and on emphasizing the member, the member state's leadership in taking action. ESD 
UNESCO and the global community aims to do this through mobilization in five priority action areas. These carry through from the Global Action Program on ESD, which ran from 2015 to 2019, because of their proven, proven success in integrating ESD at all levels, top-down through policy, learning, institution and educators, bottom-up through learners and youth, and all around in communities and cities. Through ESD for 2030's Priority Action Area, UNESCO aims that by 2030 we will live in a world where Governments have transformed education policies and frameworks to help learners achieve the Sustainable Development Goals through ESD. Learners in all walks of lives across the world have opportunities to acquire the knowledge, skills, values and attitudes needed for promoting sustainable development. Educators across the world have the opportunities to develop capacities to foster societal transformation for a sustainable future. Youth are strengthened to be agents of change, and youth organizations systematically provide training for youth and youth trainers on ESD. And people living in cities and communities across the world recognize ESD as a key instrument and lifelong learning opportunity to achieve sustainability at the local level. To succeed, we need to think global but act local and national. As part of ESD for 2030, we will have to look at country level initiatives. We will have to favor networking and partnership. We will have to, of course, take into account monitoring and evaluation, but also communicate for action and implement evidence-based actions as well as mobilize resources. ESD for 2030, its implementation will require that countries develop country initiatives. These initiatives should build on ongoing efforts in ESD as well as possibly creating new programs and activities it would also build on promoting research on emerging issues and trends while harnessing the power of partnership and collaboration, mobilizing resources, both financial and human, to support ESD implementation and creating synergies. It would also be about communicating how education supports the achievement of the SDGs, as well as monitoring progress on ESD and transformation in general. Let me turn to country initiatives on ESD. The aim of the ESD for 2030 country initiative is that every government is creating a network of actors within their country who are interested or active in implementing ESD. They may, may be policy makers, teachers, civil society, youth, corporate, academic, and learners of all ages. These networks will build a plan of action for each member state to achieve that vision of 2030 that the framework ambitiously endorses. These uh, country initiatives, some of them have been showcased at our recent UNESCO World Conference on ESD. So what are some of the next steps? Currently, we are building momentum to be able to implement between 2022 and 2024. In 2025, we will do a midterm review. And then from 2026 to 2029, we will be pushing for reinforcing implementation of the ESD for 2030 roadmap with a final review in 2030. Let me now turn to the UNESCO World Conference on ESD, which took place from the 17th to the 19th of May from Berlin as a virtual conference. With the motto of Learn for our Planet, Act for Sustainability. This conference was prepared by a series of pre-conference workshops, a set of seven different workshops looking at various issues and asking 
some of the questions that are uh, puzzling or puzzling us. What are the urgent challenges for ESD? What are challenges that are best addressed by ESD? Where should ESD invest more to, to achieve transformation? And what kind of emphasis should be placed on issues to be discussed? This series of pre-conference workshops brought together over 17,000 people from all walks of lives, all area, uh, areas of education and associated fields, and from all over the world. But what came out of this was something which you could say it would be, what do you want more of? Structural changes that looked at the issue of consumption, economy, climate, supporting, better supporting educators and youth in terms of uh, skills, knowledge, uh, empowerment, looking at holistic approaches, but also tackling the issue of inclusion and diversity, strengthening ESD in the Global South, providing more attention to marginalized and underrepresented issues. So now let's turn to the World Conference. As I said, it was held in May and had been postponed due to the current pandemic. It had three main objectives. One was to mobilize support for implementing ESD for 2030. One was to also highlight global challenges and what education response could be provided to them. And finally, to promote ESD as a key enabler for achieving all 17 SDGs. It was organized by UNESCO in cooperation with Germany, and it was attended by over 2,800 participants from 161 countries. Over 10,000 viewers followed the live stream on the days of the event. Since then, the number of viewers has increased, as well as a large following on social media. The World Conference outcomes included the Berlin Declaration, which will I will highlight uh, and explain a little later. In particular, the declaration highlighted that we need to ensure that ESD is a foundational element of our education system at all levels with environmental and climate action as a core curriculum component. We must harness the power of ESD for the redesign of our societies and that the time to learn and act for our planet is now. The declaration and the conference was supported by strong political commitments. Some 80 ministers and vice ministers of education made commitments on their country's plans of action on ESD for 2030 implementation. Now let me explain a little bit more about the Berlin Declaration and what it contains and how it came about. The Berlin Declaration was drafted through a broad, inclusive consultation process in the months leading up to the conference, led by a drafting group of member state representatives. There was one designated member for each of UNESCO's regional electoral groups, the host of the current and the previous world conferences, Germany and Japan, as co-chairs, as well as the UNESCO Secretariat. The drafts prepared by the group went through various consultation. In a first phase, a draft was circulated electronically to a wide group of ESD, education and sustainability stakeholders. In a second phase, the text was shared for comments with all UNESCO national commissions and delegation. In addition, the drafting group members shared the text variously in their regional groups. Over 
160 comments from around 45 countries were received. The drafting group attempted to be highly inclusive and made a strong effort to take all relevant comments on board while keeping the text short, readable and impactful. Let me briefly introduce the text of the declaration. The declaration starts with an acknowledgement by the education community of the dramatic interrelated challenges the world is facing, in particular, the climate crisis, the loss of biodiversity, pollution, pandemic diseases, extreme poverty and inequalities, violent conflicts and other crises that endanger life on our planet. The declaration then highlights education as a powerful enabler of positive change in terms of mindsets and worldviews. It spells out ESD as a foundation for the required transformation of our world, providing everyone with the knowledge, skills, values and attitudes to become change agents for sustainable development. The Declaration welcomes the new ESD for 2030 framework and its roadmap for implementation as the guiding documents for the next 10 years to mobilize actions on ESD. With the declaration, stakeholders made a number of commitments to take ESD forward, commitments that are made within respective mandates and areas of responsibilities and take into account needs, capacities, available resources and national priorities. To mention a few of them, commitments concern the following to ensure that ESD is the foundational element of our education systems at all level, with environmental and climate action as a core curriculum component. To implement ESD with joint emphasis on cognitive, social, emotional and behavioral learning dimensions, including promoting the required political action to bring about necessary changes and harnessing the power of ESD for the redesign of societies. To invest in capacity buildings of teachers, recognizing that they play a crucial role in transforming education. Other commitments concern whole institution approaches, availability of resources, empowering young people, prioritizing the marginalized, and ensuring collaboration between the education sector and other sectors that have an impact on sustainable development. The declaration ends with a commitment to take its provision forward through other important processes, such as COP26 on climate, COP15 on biodiversity and beyond. The declaration ends with the call to learn and act for our planet now, because transformative learning for people and the planet is a necessity and our survival for our survival and that of future generations. It is time to learn for our planet. It is time for you to share your passion for ESD with our Learn for Our Planet campaign. Tell us how you are already promoting people to learn for our planet. Join our UNESCO LinkedIn group on ESD to share into discussions on all these issues. Thank you for your attention. I hope this will help in your deliberation.